<laughs> Thanks. It's chemicals in the brain, like, um, you know, no one can ever help what is happening in their brain and what's happening with the chemicals in their brain. Um, and that's kind of what those three conditions have to do with. Anxiety, well, it, I mean, it comes out in different forms for every single person. Some people have social anxiety, academic anxiety, you know, there's lots of different forms and also different severities. It can cause people to like not want to talk to other people. It can also um, manifest physically as well. There's a lot of like health effects of just having anxiety, like increased heart rate and nausea, developing gastritis, which is kind of like where your stomach acid can rise, so the pH level decreases in your stomach, and it starts to burn through the, the first lining of your stomach. So that was kind of like a physical manifestation of anxiety, and a lot of people can also, you know, like sweating, shaking, inability to think, of course. Well, bipolar, it's, um, it's like you go through periods of like euphoria, and then periods of depression. So it's like the, chem the chemical imbalance is like, um, I think it's serotonin that's like really, really high and then all of a sudden it's really, really low. Um, and I think those periods are about three months or like, I mean, it varies for each person, but um, it's not, you know, some people think it's like, oh, daily, da day to day. People say like, oh, you're so bipolar or something if like people's emotions are kind of all over the place. But bipolar is really like for a long period of time, you're really euphoric and then for a long period of time, very depressed. It's pretty hard to treat. It's, I think it's harder to treat than depression, but of course it, it, it depends on each person. Um, about one in three people experience depression in their life. So a normal level of person chemicals are here. So this is, um, you know, regular, having, you know, an okay day, not super happy, and then like, this is happy, and this is sad, and this is back to regular, but for people with depression, it's lower, so it's like down here, um, and then this is happy, this is sad, and back to normal. But it's it's like, this is a normal person's, and this is someone with depression, so you still have ups and downs, which is I think what's the most complicated for people without depression to understand, is that you can still be happy and be sad, but it's, it's a lower chemical level, so. A lot of times when people find out I have depression, they're very surprised because I'm kind of like a happy person generally. It mostly was just really hard to have my normal energy level. Each day I would kind of like have a certain amount of energy I could expand and by the time that was done I was just not, I could not really like socialize in the way I wanted to. I couldn't be as happy, like I physically couldn't be as happy as I should have been in my situation. And also with that, there's also physical manifestations. Sometimes people will feel like physical pain just because of that chemical imbalance. Um, and then for genetic predisposal, that doesn't mean you're necessarily born with it, but that just means that if, if some kind of event happens um, where you might not be as emotionally stable, you are more likely to, do, to form depression. Your body's not producing enough serotonin, usually. Treatment is, is really, really difficult because every single person is different and you can't really measure the chemicals in people's brains, at least right now with our medical technology. So it's hard to um, treat each person. It takes a lot of trial and error for a lot of people. It's a journey, like you have to go through a lot of different medications, get weaned on, get weaned off. If something doesn't work, it's um, it takes a long time, and it's not like a quick fix. It's not like you start taking the medication, and the next day you don't have depression. It takes about a month to three months for like the medication to actually start working, um, and so it's like a really slow process. It's not something that's just going to automatically make you happier and cure you. And a lot of times, people won't necessarily just feel like all of a sudden happy. Um, it's just kind of. For a lot of people, it, it just, when they start taking medications, they're, they just start having more better days. Like with depression, it's, it's hard to have good days, but if medications start to work, people will often notice that they're having more good days. And then also for me, it was like, I had a lot of physical pain with depression and I, I would like feel it in my chest. That eventually like would start to go away when I started taking medication. I don't feel that physical pain anymore. My best advice is just get help because I so regret not getting help when I when I could have. I recognized that I was depressed, but I didn't I didn't feel like it was validated and I felt like, oh maybe I just told myself maybe it's not depression, you know, maybe everyone has their ups and downs, but um I I knew that I wasn't, you know, I was having like a lot of suicidal thoughts because the pain was so severe that I just wanted that to go away, which I think is a, a common experience for a lot of people. They just they want that pain to go away. Even if you might not and um, have depression, just get help. You may as well, you know. One in three people have it, so it's, it's 
probably likely that you have some some form of, of depression if you're feeling those kind of feelings. Don't wait because it's not worth it. You know, the quicker you talk to someone about it and get help, the quicker that you know, you're gonna find a solution. Um, another thing I would say is that therapy is like amazing. Like a lot of people think it's really taboo, but I don't, I don't understand why they think that because it's really just a person to talk to that really helps you um, try and understand your own emotions better and helps you solve your own problems. Um, just thinking about the world in a kind of more analytical way for me. Um, and so I think for everyone it can, you know, a lot of people have a lot of emotional issues that they kind of take out on others and I think it's a lot of people could benefit from like just having a therapist to talk out problems and um, kind of think about things a little deeper. And even with depression I would kind of like really push myself to be energetic because that's who I am, that's who, but it was just, it was extra hard. Um, so I think just not ever assuming that just because someone is, is like happy and energetic that they don't have their own problems. Um, you know, everyone goes through their challenges no matter how small they are, they're still valid. Um, so never invalidate someone's challenges. Um, even if it doesn't seem like a challenge to you in their own life and in their own head, it is a challenge that they're experiencing. Kind of like get my own experience out and just with my friends and they've been very supportive, great listeners and just really trying to put themselves in my position and understand what I'm going through and how like sometimes, um, you know, before the medication was working, why sometimes I wouldn't be able to always be super happy and um, why I wouldn't be able to be myself. So just being understanding and using empathy and sympathy to try and put themselves in my position. People without so many resources um, that have mental health issues might go through and people without financial resources and without social resources are more likely to have depression. Um, so that's just kind of one of those systematic problems that we have. Luckily I have a lot of family support so um, it worked out okay for me but for those who might not have that family support or the financial support um, I just can't even imagine what what they would do. I think one thing I've, I've especially learned is to not um, invalidate your own problems. A lot of times my parents would say when I was feeling down they didn't understand that I had depression at that point or they didn't want to accept it. They would say like your life is so great like you have loving you have loving parents you have so much you know we have we have more than enough food and housing and money that we need like why aren't you happy like you, you should be thankful for all that you have um, and I knew that in my brain but I couldn't feel that because of the depression so it, it was hard for me to admit it a big advice I would give to people would be not to invalidate your own emotions um, and to always just kind of like embrace them and accept them and try and find a solution. Other times people can be going through a lot more struggles. You know, I would think my parents would always talk about like people whose lives were so much harder than mine, which was true. But although other people might be going through something harder, your, your, your problems are still valid um, no matter what, so yeah.